talking to Simon now. Hi, Simon. How are you? Hi, how are you? You're talking to us about knees today. Yep. Can you give us a bit of a lowdown on what, what you're covering? So we had a couple of clinics where we were talking about how to manage the acute knees. So the patient is coming in with a, with a new knee injury uh, and what your options are for, for dealing with that and, and where to send them. Um, and we talked about the sort of the three outcomes of that, that consult. One is going to be that you're going to re, re, rehab and perhaps review them a little bit later. Uh, two is going to be that you're going to refer them to somebody, hopefully to a, to a specialist because you think there's something going on and it needs further investigation. And then the, the third option, which was sending them straight to hospital. Uh, and we talked about how what, what to recognise in, in those, those things. For the ones that you're really worried about, the ones that we think need to go straight to hospital, they're the ones who you think might need an operation early. And there's sort of three things that we talked about. One was a, a fracture, so a bad fracture, and, and we thought that everyone really who's coming in with an acute knee problem needs an x-ray to, to rule that in or out. Um, two was someone who's got an acute locked knee. So that's a knee that um, may be moving okay, they may be able to, to weight bear, but the knee can't get straight. Yeah. So there's a difference between a, a knee that locks occasionally, so jams and you can't straighten it, and one that's just suddenly locked and can't get straight. It's pretty rare, um, but those ones are the ones that, that, that probably do need assist. And if you're, if you're on the phone to, a, to an orthopedic registrar and you say, I've got this patient who's got an, got an acute locked knee, they're, they're not going to argue, they're going to they're um, see them straight away. And it's really obvious to us, isn't it? They can't, they can't bend the knee, it's done. It's mainly yeah. that they can't straighten it. So the, so the locked, knee, locked knee will be that they, they usually can bend it okay, but there's a, there's a mechanical block to extension. That, ah, that's sort of the okay, key definition so to a locked knee. And it's, it's not always easy because somebody who's had, say, an acute ACL injury will have a, a big swollen knee with a big hemarthrosis and they may not be able to get it straight because it's so swollen. Yeah. But the, the difference there or between that and a locked knee is, is the sort of overall picture is of a knee that's not moving well, whereas a locked knee will generally be able to bend, yep. but they just can't get it out straight past, yeah. say, 10 or 15 degrees. Yeah. And that's where you're thinking there's something mechanical blocking it yeah. and, that, and that's the one to check. Um, and then the last one that we talked about, the last one that you, you don't want to miss is, a, is an extensive mechanism rupture. So that's a quadriceps tendon rupture or a, um, a patellar tendon rupture. Um, because that's one, if you, if you miss it and, and you're then having to do the surgery sort of six or eight weeks later, it's often not as easy as it, well, it would be at two weeks. Fortunately, there's an easy test for that and that's the straight leg raise. So if, you, if you've got someone coming in and you ask them to straight leg raise, if they can do that, their extensive mechanism is intact. It's a little, little bit like the Achilles squeeze test. If you squeeze the car, and the foot moves, the Achilles tendon's not ruptured. Um, so it's, it's the, the missed quadriceps and patellar tendon ruptures, which, which still happen pretty frequently, it's, ne it's never a failure of, of accessing the patient or whatever, it's just, it's just a failure of not thinking about it. And, and if you do a straight leg raise you'll never, on every patient, you'll never miss it. Okay. Yeah. So examination-wise, clearly that's a key thing. Yeah. What else? What else should we be doing in our, our 15 minutes? So we, we talked a bit about the, the or how to do an examination, and we, from most people remember from medical school, medical school, people asking about the ligament test, about whether it's a Lockman for ACL or an anterior draw or a posterior draw or the MCL. And I'd reassure everyone that, that those tests are really important in primary care. Um, those aren't the examination things that you need to you need to pick up on. The main ones are can the patient weight bear. So if they if they can't put weight through their knee, then something's wrong. Something's wrong. And if there's no fracture, then probably there's something deep inside that's an, that's an issue. And those are the ones that you refer, not necessarily the hospital, but some sort of subacute referral. Um, the other, other key sign is a big effusion. So someone who's coming early and their knee is full, tensely swollen, that's most likely blood. And again, if you've done an X-ray and there's no fracture, then almost always it's going to be an ACL, or the next most common thing will be, say, a patellar dislocation, or, or um, meniscal tear less commonly, but perhaps a big meniscus could do that. But generally, if they can't wait there and they've got a big effusion, something's wrong and they need to be seen. Um, and we talked a bit about the, that referral. Uh, um, many people have access to, a, to an early referral source, like an orthopedic surgeon in their clinic, or, or here we have the an, an access is an acute knee clinic. If you're able to get them through to that, it doesn't really matter so much if you've missed one of those other options that needs to go straight to hospital, because as long as someone's seen, say, with a, a quadriceps tendon rupture in that first week and it's, and it's picked up, then it's still okay to do that operation. Generally, sort of within two weeks, it's, it's, it's fine as long as you can get through there. So if you've got that sort of access to that referral uh, person who's going to gonna be able to see them within a week or two, then that, that's generally safe for most things, needs that you're worried about. Um, so that's a pretty good summary of the acute knee. In terms of the chronic knee, I think the thing we see most is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis, yeah. yeah. Any good tips for what we should be doing to manage our patients with, with an old knee? <laughs> so uh, my, an old knee that, that has got 
bad radiographic arthritis, and not, you know, often it's always hard to assess the x-ray, but generally the radiologist will use the word moderate to severe. So if they've got those changes and they're in the right age range for a knee replacement, I think it's reasonable to, to, to send them for a surgeon for assessment. If they've got mild osteoarthritis, um, probably they're, they're better actually just managing it with, with weight loss, um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and exercise. Yeah. A lot of people sort of worry that they're going to wear their knee out with exercise, um, but in fact the opposite is true. People with early osteoarthritis do better if they're fit and strong, yeah. um, and if the one piece of advice you can give a patient is get hold of an exercise cycle, get yeah. access to an exercise cycle, and, and get on that sort of 20 minutes a day, not so much with high resistance, but, but low resistance and high cadence, yeah. and if pe people put with early osteoarthritis, that's probably the most effective single measure that you can do um, to, to get their symptoms down. Fantastic. And you mentioned weight loss as well, which is also important. Yeah, weight loss is challenging, right? But yeah. it, again, that, that of all, the, all these factors that we look at in the non-operative treatment of arthritis, um, weight loss is always, always coming. If you can achieve it, if you can get somebody to achieve weight loss, it really does make a huge difference to, the, to these symptoms. Do you look at that with the patients that you operate on as well? Oh, absolutely, yeah, because yeah. cause it's these... The outcome of knee replacement in terms of complication, particularly yeah. infection, is worse the higher the patient's BMI. Yeah. Um, and once people get up to, to a BMI, say, over 40, the, the complications, the risk of surgery start to look quite scary. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in some places in the, in the United States, they have what they call a hard stop. So yeah. BMI over 40, they won't do the operation. Personally, I think it's a bit, it's a bit unfair because, because people with, who are with a high BMI who have knee replacement um, get improvement. You know, yeah. they, they do well. So, yeah. so just it's almost like you're blaming them for their high BMI, which I'm not sure is always fair in some cases, but certainly if you can get them to lose weight, yeah. it'll make their arthritis symptoms better yeah. and make their outcome of surgery if they do have it, have it also, also more positive. Oh, fantastic, Simon. Well, thank you very much. No. Enjoy your day. Thanks, Helen. Thank Thanks for having me.